Thank you very much. Thank you for your attendance. I mean, I'm really very pleased to be here with you and to discuss with you uh, all the different issues that worries us in Tunisia, the different problems, the outcome of the revolution, the future of the revolution, and what is going to happen in the next years. And I suppose that's not going to be only the work of the leftist groups in Tunisia, but all the leftist groups throughout the world. So we need to discuss together all these issues and to have I am going to give you just what is happening, give you an opinion, and we like to share the different opinions uh, about what is happening in Tunisia and how things are going to, to go on. First of all, you know that uh, when uh, the uprising or the revolution, whatever you might call it, uh, happened in Tunisia, that there, there were different issues. The first one is the social issue that's we have uh, um, unemployment rising, prices rising, inequality between the different regions. So from uh, the colonization until, that was long time ago, until the different governments in Tunisia, there was always a difference between the coast of Tunisia and the interior parts of Tunisia. Also, another problem, which is the problem of unemployment, that caused many uprisings throughout the history of Tunisia. That was an uprising in 1978, 1984, in 2008 with the mining region, and the last one is in Sidi Bouzid. And in Sidi Bouzid, it is one of the poorest regions in Tunisia, where you have high unemployment, high school dropouts, where the level of unemployment reaches about 30 to 35 percent, the number of school dropouts reaches about 40 percent, where you have women out of work about 50%, where you have those who have got certificates and those who have got university degrees, many of them are, right, they didn't get a job and many of them are unemployed. Now, this is, the first thing was the social issue. That was the first, the beginning of the revolution. Now, what happened later on is that the civil rights movements the civil rights activists, the trade union activists, they have given an overall to this uprising to make of it a revolution, first of all, to ask Ben Ali and his group to leave, to digash, that's the, 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 the thing, that's what, what they have said, and to ask for, an, for the most important rights. First of all, the right to dignity, the right to, to have a job, the right to democracy, the, the right to freedom, the right to equality between men and women. So those are the fundamental slogans of the revolution. To ask Ben Ali Digash and his party Digash, why? Because this party is supposed not only to be a political party that repressed people, not only through a, a security system that is one of the most frightful systems in the whole region, that's one, through a judicial system where the judges, most of them are corrupt, and through a media that is always in the hands of the government. So that was the system through which Ben Ali governed. But at the same time, through a mafia which took the economy in its hands, leaving Tunisia in poverty. So the issues, these issues have been risen during the revolution. Now, the situation. So that's what people asked for, dignity, jobs, liberty, uh, freedom of the press, a c a freedom of the civil society, jobs for the unemployed, etc. After Ben Ali left, and you know the conditions in which they were left, there were many uh, uh, challenges to the, to the new. The first of all was the challenge of the elections. The election, we had quite a fair election. We must admit that. But the outcome of the election does not match with the outcome of the revolution. So there is a bit of contradiction between both. And this is quite, many people see it, we are going to discuss it. I'd like to discuss it after with you. It is 
uh, quite normal because those who did the revolution are not all, always those who are always electing people. So those who did the revolution, there were hundreds of thousands of people. They are not the millions of people who went to vote. And we are going to discuss later on uh, the outcome of this. Now, a year after this, the, the situation is not so good. It's promising, but at the same time, there are a lot of dangers. It's promising because we have a resilient, quite strong civil society that is still fighting for the rights that we had to keep on with the rights. You know, for example, that the Tunisian country is the country that has the first country in the Arab world that has banned polygamy since the 1956. It is the first country that allowed abortion since 1973. It's the first country that has a human rights league since the, uh, the 1970s in Africa and in the Arab country. Now, this resilient civil society, we have a trade union, a strong trade union that collaborates very well with all the civil society. And it has a tradition of revolt and of rebellion. Every time there is a problem that concerns the workers, whether it is the structural adjustment plan or the rising of prices or the releasing of workers, there is always the trade union which is, which is always there. And we found, we human rights activists, in the trade union locals, the place where we start revolt from and the place where there were strikes and where there were meetings. After a year now of this revolution, the economic situation is still very, very bad. And very bad because of two things. The first thing is that the sit-ins and the problems and the expectations of people are not yet met. People who were asking for jobs, they didn't have jobs so far. Sit-ins continue. And also, the problems, the turbulences, the revolts, etc., have created more unemployment. Now, we have about 300 thousand people more unemployed than before. We have about 40% less of rece receipts of tourism, less. We have still, because the government so far didn't answer the expectations of people. And it's difficult for a government that pretends to keep on with the same capitalist principles to try to solve a solution. So that's, that's that's one factor. So that, that has contributed to more social problems now in Tunisia. They also, the, the, uh, the democratic and civil rights, we find now problems mainly raised by the Salafist groups, those who were under Ben Ali cut and put in prison because of their principles, because of, uh, they've been tortured, etc. Now these people come out of the blue, there are thousands of them, and they try to find a food in the, in the revolution. Now, the reaction of the government to that, and these Salafist groups, first of all, you know they, they believe in the Salaf and the predecessor, etc. They threaten people in their basic rights, they threaten tourism too, they use, they try to force young girls to, to put on the niqab, etc., etc., etc. They organize sit-ins in the university in order to separate between, uh, between girls and boys, etc. Now, the reaction of the government is, not, is still a soft reaction. And they, we have explanation to that. It's because most of the Islamist groups, that, especially the Islamist group that takes the power now, does not try to solve or to be rough on those Salafis because they are part of their platform, they're part of their background militants down on the... So, the mili and the militants on the ground, you do not make a difference much between those who belong to another and those two who belong to the Salafist groups. Now, this is threatening to, the, to this. The, to the civil society. This threat is threatening to democracy. This threatening even to the principles of the revolution. Now, but that's not the only, they are not the only players. We organized many meetings. We, we tried to defend ourselves. Also, the media, they have been attacked 
because it seems that the government does not make a difference between a media that is free and a media that speaks in the name of the government. So the media has reacted, the women have reacted to that. There was, there was we suggested even an alternative constitution where you guarantee the rights, one of the first fundamental rights, and we are backed by the trade unions, which is the right to have a job. We like to introduce that among in the constitution. Equality between men and women, we try to put it in the constitution and to force things. And what is helping us is that there is a group of democratic groups, uh, uh, there is a group of Democrats in the constituency, and also NADA cannot work by itself because it does not, although it has the majority, it cannot work without a coalition. So we rely on that on the friction among the coalition in order to introduce the most fundamental rights, the rights, the right to have a job, the right to regional equality, the right to have equality between men and women, and the right to have freedom, and the right the freedom of the press, and to have a transitional justice, because that's one of the most important things. Transitional justice that is going to tax those who were responsible for torture before establishing a sort of uh, 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 right uh, alien between different people and uh, pardon between different people. But before that, there should be there should be a, a, a right a transitional justice that is worth it. That is going to everyone who is you know many people were tortured, many people died. Uh, in torture, many people have been followed, harassed by the police, many people were kept sequestrated in their house for months and for years, and all this they need, we need to uh, transitional, transitional justice, that is going to talk about that, to, uh, to have that, to bring those people to court, and to have a judicial system that is really independent uh, from the government and from anybody else. Because, as I said, the social aspect was the first that triggered the revolution and uh, uh, people started because of the social problems. So the political problem is only, does not mean that it's not important, but it means that in Tunisia, after a vacuum and an absence of politics for so many years, only the elite through the associations and the trade union have kept with the political ideas. So, and only the leftist groups have got this idea of politics. The Islamist groups throw history in Tunisia where people who were asking for power, they didn't contribute to the social issues. So, so this, is, this is why the social issue is the most important thing. It started a revolution. There was a general strike in 1978 in Tunisia with many people dead because of the reaction of the government. There is another reaction, there was another one when there was the structural adjustment plan in, 1940, in 1984, where there were many people also dead. There, that was where it, is, it was called the revolt of bread because people reacted when the prices of bread has got, uh, has got, have gone up. And there was another one, which is in 2008, another milestone where people were injured and where people were, were dead and people were asking for regional equality, were asking for full employment, were asking for the end of corruption because we had a very, very corrupt regime, which everybody, those who were dealing with politics, as those who did not deal with politics, know that we were governed by a sort of mafia. A mafia which uh, has done of privatization a way to gather on and to uh, accumulate wealth. Through, so you know what happens, they take a sector, they privatize it, before they privatize it, what, what they did? The first thing is that they change, and they put the new machines, that the government is going to pay the new machines. And then they are going to sell it, and then to, who is going to sell it? And the, uh, the, the, 
to whom? The, to those people, to those uh, uh, either the, his own laws or his family or his brother or his sister or those who are people who were around him. So corruption was a sign, a very important sign. And corruption has led to, I think, that's my opinion, to the election of the Islamists. Why? Because Islamist groups have insisted on one thing, which is the moral issue. So people with morals are not going to be people who are going to, to steal or to get the money or to take, privatize and take in their pockets. So this is one issue. The second issue is that even after the revolution, the trade union groups, the uh, the civil rights activists, the human rights activists, the women activists, they, have, they didn't end with the 14th of January. The 14th of January was the beginning of another movement. Their protests in order to get rid of the political party in power, which had got about 2 million people. So they, are, they were outlawed, they, were, they didn't have the, they, they were, most of them were pursued for what they did, etc. And they asked for a new constituency. So that's the first thing. But then later on, it, it is, uh, the, the social issue is carried on. And why is, uh, I mean, people had a lot of expectations. You know, for example, and this is very sad to say it, that in March 2018, about 30,000 young people have illegally immigrated to Europe. Many of them died in the sea. And when you say immigrated, I myself, part of the social forum, for the Tunisian forum, I went to visit those people. And I find that most of them, they take small boats, originally meant for 10 people and 15 people, and what do you find in it? You find 170, 180 young people, most of them young, and most of them are students, and now some of them have got a university degree. Some women go there with babies because they like to join their husbands over there in Italy. So this is really a catastrophic Thing. The second social issue is that the refugees that come along from Libya, we have received about 700,000 people. You see the difference between us and the European countries. We have received about 700,000 people. We have tried as civil rights movements and associations to find means in order to give them food, in order to protect them. And we sent to Europe about 30,000 people. And these people, you would not Five, most of them died. And even until now, they did not let us know who in these camps is alive and who is dead. Still, we have families now that don't know about the outcome of their children, whether they've died or not. I was speaking to uh, my friends before. I said I was speaking to a lady and, was telling, and she said to me, that she's, she, ne she will never eat fish because she knows that her two children died in the sea, right? And is being eaten by the fish. Now, this is one of the other issues. Other issues, other social issues, is the increasing in employment. Now, in 2010, example, we had a growth of 3%, which is a bit low. Now we have 0% growth with sit-ins, et cetera. Many companies that have been in Tunisia, they have left because of sit-ins. The problem of tourism, we have a lot of problems. And the main thing is that this government does not have a solution to the, these economic problems. So regional inequality is the main problem, and it's caused, it, it, it caused many revolts throughout the history of Tunisia. Because it's a tradition. Now, if we give you the map of Tunisia, you can, in the coast, so the colonization, the French colonization that had been before, they have been settled, business and everything, and enterprises on the coast. The different governments that came after, they continued on the same trade. So you had the interior regions, like Sidi Bouzid, where the, the, the revolt started, like Gafsa in the southwest, where the revolt in 2008 started. You have all these regions lacking infrastructure, lacking 
employment, lacking everything, and you have rising poverty of, of between 20 and 30 percent poverty as opposed to the cost. So these issues with employment, we have about 250,000 people with a university degree who don't have jobs. And every year we have about something like 40,000 young degree, young people who have got degree. Most of them girls and they don't find jobs. So addressing this issue, how is the government going to face that? The government has a political plan which is to try to govern the country. They give promises. They gave promises during the election that they are going to find jobs, that the Gulf countries are, is, are going to help them, that they are no longer going to rely on the West, but on Eastern countries, regions of the Gulf. But later on, their expectations didn't come uh, right. They didn't find an answer to these problems. And they continue with the same thing. And there is, this government is dominated by Islamic groups. And honestly, these Islamic groups do not have an answer to the social problems. Why? Because they, they continue with the same capitalist trend. And for poverty, they have just one answer, which is to give charity to the other people. So they don't have, they, they don't believe in so, some type of social equality or whatever. They have only that answer. And they like to continue with the same trend with the other governments, what happened with, the, with Ben Ali, etc. Now, this is not going to solve problem. And in the long run, it's going to create problem the same as it created problem throughout the history. Every time, I tell you something, it's funny, but it's like this. Every time the IMF and the World Bank intervenes in Tunisia in order to put pressure on the government to privatize, what happens if that privatization go to the people that are very well affluent, and at the same time, they uh, uh, release workers, the, there, are, there is high prices, and the, uh, the essential prices of food also go up, and the reaction is that of trade union movements and association is that there was a contest and there was a revolt, which is usually savagely repressed. Now the government, the new government, has two things. Either to address these issues, which is going to be something very difficult due to the principles they have on the economy, etc., as they don't have an answer to this problem, or to repress, and we are going to come back to the old repressive ways, but this time it's not going to work because there is one thing that happened in Tunisia is that people have no problem of fear anymore. So that at least is an optimistic side. Thank you. first thing is uh, uh, the majority of Tunisians are Muslims. And I don't think that we should mix between Islamists and Muslims. Muslims, they are, it's a religion. They can have political views, but does not mean necessarily a mixing between politics and religion. To give you an example, a concrete example, my wife is a true Muslim. She prays five days, five times a day, but at the same time, she does not believe in the veil. She has no problem with my drinking habits. She has, uh, she, no, but this is important because this, uh, uh, the Islam we have seen in the 70s and 80s, 90s, is an Islam that has, does not refuse others. A, an Islam that is not mixed with politics. And whereas an Islamist, so uh, you, we need this because uh, sometimes the reaction to what is, to this Islamophobia that exists, there is always, sometimes I felt that there is a mixing between both, which we need to be careful in order uh, in this. 
Muslim is not always an Islamist. Now, an Islamist is a person, he can be a moderate, as he can be more fanatic, or he can be a jihadist, or whatever. Now, how does this Islamist work in the condition? Now, what we have in Tunisia, we have a tradition of an Islamist party that has used violence during history in Tunisia, either with leftist groups at the university, I was a victim myself of that, or it has used against the government, right? Uh, hotels, uh, party headquarters, throwing acid on people, etc. This is part of history, this part of the past. Now, this Islamist party, the problem of the Islamist party is this, is whether to rely on Sharia, the fundamentals of Islam, or to rely on modern principles. And sometimes there is a double speech, and this why people nowadays in Tunisia say, why Nada does have a, a double speech? It has a double speech because it is torn between two things. The Islamic principles, which are, in, in the past, there is no belief in democracy, there is no belief in human rights, there is no belief in, uh, in, in the equality between men and women, etc. And the new principles of democracy. Now, how to manage both? Normally, there is, there is the, always this confusion. Who is going to make of an Islamic party, whether moderate or not, is the reaction of the other, of the civil society towards this, and the understanding uh, that people have to make a difference between an Islamist and a Muslim, so that not to put in the same bag everybody, and then having the hatred of everybody else. Now, this is, so this party, this another party now has got 41% of uh, the, the, uh, the seats in the parliament. It cannot, it does not have a majority, and it cannot govern without other political parties. It has other two secular parties within a new coalition to govern. One has got the president, but his role is rather ceremonial, not very important, the president, and the president of the, uh, the constitution, of the constitution, who is rather has a certain power. Now, another has the majority. It has the important, the key ministries, the prime minister, who has got a very important power, the, uh, the minister of the, uh, the uh, judiciary system, right? And the minister of the interior, and the minister of foreign affairs, the most important keys. So these, uh, the, the, another, and other ministers, right? Uh, but this, the, another has stick, has asked to have forcibly this minister. Now, is, now the two parts that are with another, uh, because there, are, there were problems with the media, because they like to appoint another, like to appoint certain people who are near to it. Because in the mind of another, and this is a problem, is that you have, we have won the election, so all the groups have to shut up now to, and let us work. So this is in the mind of another, and this is what he's telling people. Now you have, we have the leg legitimacy. We have won the election. So the other two parties now are working with another, but they've got problems. Every time there is a problem. For example, every time there is one from another who talks about the inferiority of women, etc., a group from, uh, from uh, uh, the two parties is, is going to have. So now the two other uh, parties have known lots of problems because of the alliance of these two parties with them, not because of the alliance, because of the subsequent what happens later on, because another does not have an answer to the social problem, because sometimes what they say in their speeches and what they do, sometimes they have used violence against journalists, the, the, uh, 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 the militants of another they have used, and now they are organizing a sit-in for days in front of television, asking for those who are working on television and sometimes threatening them with violence if 
they don't speak about the activities and they put in the forefront of the news the activities of the prime minister and other ministers of Allah. Now you see, now the issue is big. Now, the reaction of the, uh, of the militants of the other parties, many of them have got out. Now, uh, how far is this is going to be? Because the two other parties are considered to be central left, they are considered to be secular, and they were secular. Now, they are torn between two things. Either to go with another, because uh, another is going to ensure for them, they think, the elections in the future. Or they are going to obey their militants and get out and on the principle that this Islamic party does not always believe on the principles of democracy. So the other two parties have known friction. There is a friction between another and the two other parties and there, are, there is a friction in, uh, among the other two parties. Now you might ask be, why? Because there is no friction or problems inside the other. You can understand this Nata is always based and like the Ayatollah in Iran is based on a single leader who knows everything, who is a sheikh, who has got all the, uh, the knowledge and who is the person who dictates and who gives and everyone has got to, it's like the Imam, everyone else has got to obey. Now, the two, uh, but I don't think that we should rely, I come to this question, we should not rely on the friction that exists on the, uh, among the other party. We still have uh, a very resilient, strong civil society which is, which is holding to the principles of the slogans of the revolution and they are going to stick in and I think in the civil society that uh, 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 with the leftist groups, with the trade union, it's going to, uh, later on, it's going to counterbalance because we stood, we, we stood in front of uh, uh, the uh, violence used against the journalists and we organized sit-ins on that. When we, they talk, on the 8th of March, we organized marches and sit-ins in front of the General Assembly. And we, we have given a paper in which how we imagine the equality between men and women, etc. So this resilient civil society, although it's not so strong, although it doesn't have the means that another hand, I think that this is going to carry on the fight, not against Islamic, because we believe that this elections are more or less fair, but in order to carry on with the principles, we have been fighting for them for all these years, for all these decades. The principles that we have been talking about, about the principles of equality, the principles of uh, uh, social rights, the principles of freedom, the principle of independence of the media, etc.